Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing my most recent project, which is this Hobbiton book nook. If you follow me on my other socials, like Instagram, TikTok, you've probably seen me share some videos of the process to build this piece. But today I'm gonna to be sharing the longer form video from start to finish of how I made this piece. Um, this is my most ambitious piece to date and there were definitely some hiccups along the way, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I did use a lot of 3D models by various artists, so I will link those all in the description below, as well as a lot of the materials that I used to make this piece. So if you decide to make your own, I would love to see it, so definitely tag me. I'd love to hear what you think of it, if you like it, if you have any ideas, your ideas spark my ideas, so please leave a comment and share like, subscribe, all of that. It helps support my channel's growth, which helps me make money, which helps me continue to make these pieces. So if you enjoy it, please, please go ahead and do that. I think that's it, so let's just jump in. I always recommend starting with a sketch of your ideas to get the juices flowing. You do not need to be good at drawing. I think you can tell this is not my strongest skill set. It's just a really good place to start. I then moved on to building the base, the body of my piece. I used some XPS foam to start getting an idea of the shape and then mapped out where I wanted to add a pond. I thought it would be fun to have some fish in the pond, so I 3D printed some really tiny little fish as well as some aquatic plants, painted those, and then glued them into my pond base, which I painted and added a layer of sand. Then I needed to figure out how to pour my resin. This was the first time I had ever worked with resin. So I super glued some plastic card to the sides and then mixed and poured the resin. I gotta be honest, I had to do this about four or five times before I was actually happy with the effect. And once that had cured a bit, I added some lily pads and lotus flowers. I thought that really fit the peaceful vibes of Hobbiton. And then I peeled that plastic card off. I did need to go back in and sand those edges and then also add a layer of varnish to bring the shine back. Once that was dry, I glued it into the foam base and used some spackle to fill in any of the gaps that were left between the foam and the pond. And it just secures the pond into the base a little bit more. I then moved on to building a 3D model of my hobbit hole interior. I made the ceiling separate from the base just to make it easier to paint. And a little plug, if you're interested in getting into 3D modeling, I highly recommend using Tinkercad. It's super easy to learn. It's completely free. I don't make any money for promoting it. And then we needed interior decor, so I printed out some really tiny little pieces of furniture. I have a desk and some chairs and a table, a beer stein, and then of course you gotta paint them. So here is the desk. This is gonna go in the side room. This chair is also gonna go in the side room. You're gonna be able to look through the window to see it. And I didn't design any of these decor pieces myself, but I will make sure to link the artists who did make them in the description of this video. Once those were dry, I glued them onto the wood floor. Here you can see my intention for how it will be set up, but before we can officially install that, we need to paint the facade. Again, I did not design the facades. I did make some edits to them so that the door would work, but I will link the artist below. Painting miniatures is actually not my strongest skill set. I really struggled with this part. Luckily for me, my partner is an avid miniature painter, so he helped me out a bit. And then I painted the door. I decided to go with a bright green. 
Then I drilled a hole so that I could add a facade light. This was a little nerve wracking because I was really worried I was going to ruin the piece, but it turned out okay. And now we can start installing that first hobbit hole. So I got the main wood floor put down and then am pulling the fireplace lights through the floor and installing them into the fireplace and then adding in the side room. This is what it looks like with the ceiling light on. There's gonna be a lot of electronics and wiring in this piece. So at this point, I realized I needed some organization method. So I cut off some of that foam and 3D printed this box that is going to go on the back and it will hold all of those wires, electronics, um, battery packs. It was also time to finally install that first facade. So I installed the door, the working door, into the facade face and then glued it down. The next step was to build up foam around the hobbit hole facade and the staircase. The whole idea is that the hobbit hole is built into the side of a hill, so I really wanted to get that effect. So I did a bit of carving and then went in with epoxy sculpt to fill in all the nooks and crannies and really create that more rolling hill curved look. I used foam and then epoxy sculpt because if I just used epoxy sculpt, the piece would have ended up being really heavy. And it worked really well. I would definitely recommend that approach if you were building something similar. Next was hobbit hole number two, so I had to paint that facade as well. I'm not sure how much you can tell at this point, but each hobbit hole gets progressively smaller as you move up and back on the piece, and the facade lights actually get smaller as well. I also decided to add music because I was not going to miss that opportunity, so I'm taping down my music module and then building up the foam around it before installing hobbit hole number two. Hobbit hole number two is going to have a window that lights up. I built up the foam behind it and then tested out the light to make sure it works. And then I'm repeating the same process as before of adding epoxy sculpt to shape the layer, fill in any holes that might be there, and just make the piece flow. I glued a cover onto the music module so that I then had a base to build up the third layer, which brings me to painting the facade of the third hobbit hole. I added a facade light and then just like the other steps, I built up the foam, glued in the hobbit hole, built up the foam some more, and then did the whole epoxy sculpt process, but I won't make you watch the entire thing again. Here is what we ended up with. At this point, I decided that I really wanted to add a tree, but the epoxy sculpt in that corner was a bit too bulky, so I decided to cut a piece of that off, which wasn't the best idea. This is the moment that I realized that I had cut one of my wires. So after a brief freak out, I got into solution mode and figured out how I could add a light and rewire it differently. So it worked, which is great. <laughs> I then jumped back to layer one to work on those electronics buttons. So I installed them into the button cover. Here you can get an idea of how that is going to work. And then I needed to install them into the larger body, so I cut some foam, glued all that in, and then built the foam up around it. I do that a lot on this project. So once that was put together, I moved back to the tree, I 3D printed and painted a tree trunk, and then added some adhesive to the branches and started adding some uh, like loose shrubbery that I had that only worked okay so I started adding some clump foliage which really helped bring the the tree idea together and gave it a lot more volume. So I glued that into layer three and then took my epoxy sculpt to incorporate those buttons and the tree into the overall piece. I then painted the entire piece a taupey brown color 
Well, I mean, not the entire piece, just the epoxy sculpt. And then went section by section, adding Mod Podge and then pouring sand onto the piece. So anything that's the taupey brown color got a layer of sand. This is definitely when I got to the messy part of this project. I mean, this whole project was kind of messy and it just gets worse after this. I then used some tape to map out where I wanted there to be a walking path and then took brown paint and painted around the path. So anything that is not under the tape got painted a dark brown. So this really seals in that sand and makes it look like dirt, which is nice because we are going to put grass on top of the dirt. So I went section by section, layering down adhesive, and then using a static grass device to basically sift the grass onto the piece. So the static grass device electrically charges the grass fibers so that they stand straight up so that your grass actually looks how grass looks. Um, I had never done this process before and it actually, it turned out pretty well. It was just a bit of a messy process but it was definitely worth the final outcome. I did have a little bit of trouble with the walkways. The sand started to come off of them. So I just went back, added some tacky glue and then poured in some sand on those walkways. So I was able to correct any issues there. Once that was all dry, it is time to add in some final details. So I added in a couple little wooden park benches and then I added in some fences in front of some of the hobbit holes just to create more of a little garden. And then I went in and added flowers to each of the hobbit holes, which I think really brought a lot of color and brightness and light to the piece. The next step was to install those pumpkins onto the buttons. And then I also installed a chimney which when you press down on it will trigger the music. And then I needed to actually solder all of the electronics together. I kept it really short here, but it was actually really hard. And I hid all of that wiring behind a panel in the back of the piece. Next, I needed to create a display box for my final piece. My piece is not perfectly square. It has a lot of lumps and bumps and so I had a lot of hiccups trying to get the box right here. I once again messed up, but I finally got it together. You can see me celebrating. I was so happy. That was like the fourth time I tried to make the box. And here is the final piece. 